Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to start a new series on the Dell PowerEdge R740 XD server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on processors, but in the series as a whole, we're going to cover processors, RAM, drives, RAID, NIC. We're going to show you how to install VMware, how to install Windows Server operating systems, and a whole lot more. So click that like and smash that subscribe. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R740 XD server. In this video, as we mentioned, we're going to specifically focus on processors, so let's just hop in. There are two CPUs inside. It's an LGA3647 socket, which means it takes Intel first-gen and second-gen scalable procs. Your first-gen procs are going to be your 4100 silver, your 5100 and 6100 gold, and your 8100 platinum. Your second-gen procs are going to be your 4200 silver, your 5200 and 6200 gold and your 8200 platinum. So those are the uh, different types of procs that will be compatible with the R740 XD. And honestly, there's a ton of them and there's a bunch of great ones. And what we're going to hop into now is just tell you what do we recommend? Because we get asked all the time, like, hey, there are so many different options. What, what procs should I go with? So what we try to do is make it a little bit simpler and we break it down into three categories. We have our low end procs, which are going to be very budget friendly. They're honestly pretty cheap nowadays. And you can put two of them in not break the bank, but they still have decent performance overall. They're not going to be the best, they're not going to be the fastest, but they're still really, really good processors overall. We have our value procs, which to me, I think is kind of the sweet spot as a whole. You get really good procs, great performance overall, still very budget friendly, going to be more expensive than low-end procs, but they're not going to be crazy expensive. Great for home lab guys, great for uh, corporate environments, nothing that's super over robust. This is just a, a great area right here. This is really what we recommend is the value procs. And then we have the high-end procs and the high-end procs are going to be definitely more expensive as a whole they're not going to be crazy expensive compared to a brand new server but you're going to have a you know a better performing proc it's going to be your second gen scalable just high-end stuff and honestly they've come down on pricing as a whole over the last few months because they were still almost at the exact retail price they came out at and now they've come down quite significantly so they've actually come into a better you know solution as a whole uh, especially if you don't want to have to buy a thirty forty thousand dollar new server this is a great suite spot where you can still get two uh, second gen scalable procs that are going to be high end and build a server out and still be under 10 grand. So that's a, a still a great uh, solution overall. So let's hop in and tell you what they are. So the low end procs we recommend, there's three of them. They're going to be first gen scalable silver procs. It's going to be the 4110, 4114, and the 4116. 2.1, 2.2, and 2.1 gigahertz. It's going to be 8 core, 10 core, 12 core. Again, all these are very budget friendly. They're not going to break the bank. They're going to be uh, good performance overall and you know not not crazy expensive so great for low-end applications honestly great for storage as well which is great for the XD uh, server so they're they're great solutions for this system as a whole so, so what are the value procs that we recommend well there's three value procs and that's going to be your 6126 your 6132 and your 6142 all these are first gen scalable gold big fan of all of them they're all 2.6 gigahertz they're gonna be faster than your low-end procs they're not the fastest procs but still 2.6 is gonna be a nice speed overall and it's gonna be a 12 core, 14 core, and 16 core. And this is uh, kind of how we say uh, uh, this is going to be the jack of all trades, master of none. Um, they're great procs. They're very robust. They're not going to handle your most robust applications. But if you're running a corporate environment, this right here is a great sweet spot. If you're running a storage server, this is a great sweet spot. So these are all procs we build with, honestly, on a daily basis. And the, these are some of the ones we love. So now let's talk about the high end procs. So what are the high end procs we recommend? Well, there's three high end procs that we recommend. They're all going to be on the second gen scalable side which are going to be more expensive than all the first gen scalable procs we just recommended on value and low end but they're not going to be breaking the bank they've come down quite substantially over the last few months and so these are a great solution that again will not break the bank completely but be very high high performance and you don't have to go get a new server so this is a definitely a good nice little sweet spot so that's going to be your 6242R which is gold your 6248R which is also gold and your 8256 which is platinum it's going to be a 20 core 24 core and a 4 core and if People ask, why did you throw the four core in there? Well, let's talk about the speeds. So it's 3.1, 3.0, and 3.8. And if you're looking for a low core solution with a high speed, because you have to worry about Microsoft licensing, this is a great option right here. So that's one that we recommend. So, all right, now let's uh, go ahead and physically install one and remove our old proc. But before we do, I'm gonna grab my ESD game, be right back. 
All right, I have my ESD gear on. We're safe to work inside our machine. So I always like to lay out everything that we're gonna need before we do an upgrade. So uh, first things first, uh, in order to actually remove the heat sink, we are gonna need the T30 bit. It's not your normal Phillips head screwdriver. It is the T30 bit, so we're gonna need that. We are going to need thermal grease to put onto our Prox, and we are gonna need a rag to potentially clean up the area of our old Prox, and the, also we'll need to clean up the bottom of the heat sink. So this is everything that we're gonna need as a whole. So let's go ahead and toss it to the side, and we're gonna go ahead and pop the latch, lift the top. We're gonna remove our air baffle, or our air shroud. Just gonna lift this straight up and set this to the side. So now we're gonna to wanna to remove our heat sinks. So if you watch our R740 series for the CPU, uh, you'll notice the heat sinks look a little different. These are uh, not the high performance ones. They work just fine. It just depends on the uh, wattage that you have for your CPU. So it's a good thing to note that you might need a different heat sink if you upgrade it to uh, too high of a wattage. So uh, for what we're doing, this is gonna be perfectly fine. So uh, first thing we're gonna do is just unscrew uh, the two screws with our T30 bit. Once we unscrew it, you will feel it. That's one of the reasons actually like a normal screwdriver, you'll feel it actually come off as opposed to a uh, electric screwdriver. But now that it's off, I can't actually remove it. I need to push these two blue tabs. So we're gonna push these in, and now we can lift this just straight up. And when you lift it straight up, the CPU will actually come out because there's a black clip that is installed into the heat sink that is also installed with the CPU. So it's all one kit put together. So when you remove it, and you kind of need it nowadays because the there are 300, or sorry, excuse me, 3,647 pins. That's what all the little gold dots, that's what all the little pins here are. There is a ton of pins as a whole, so you have to get it perfectly on. So the way that Dell has set it up, and I actually really like the way they've set this up, is to use this clip to just make sure you line everything up nice and perfect. So one of the things I also wanna recommend is when I remove this, you will have some old thermal grease on here that is gonna be uh, just dried and it could just flake off. So I don't really like to do it over uh, the exposed pins. It's better to do it outside of the server just in case. Now I'm gonna do it over here just to show you on screen. Uh, you're gonna need to basically start by pushing these black clips in. This one will pull out. There's two that pull out and there's two that just push in. And it's honestly pretty simple as a whole. When you just start popping them out, you'll see uh, it releasing from the server as a whole, or excuse me, from the uh, heat sink as a whole. So now we're down to the last one, and this is where I get nervous because there's the thermal paste in there, but we'll do the last one over here off, off screen. And so once we removed it, um, and this honestly isn't too, too bad. Sometimes it's super old and it'll just flake everywhere. We're gonna need to clean this, and if you wanna reuse this, it'd be nice to clean this as well. So we'll show you how to remove this. So there's two black clips and this uh, uh, plastic is pretty flexible as a whole. You can't just rip it off, but you can gently just kind of pull back and this will just pop out and you can remove your CPU. So I'm gonna set this to the side and I'm gonna put my CPU in our tray over here and I can clean that later. So now I'm gonna grab my nice clean rag and I'm gonna clean this um, and again, I don't like to clean it over the server because I just don't want to have anything flake in to the exposed pins. And I'll check this sometimes just to make sure that there's not uh, any thermal paste on here. And there's a little bit, nothing too crazy, but I'll go ahead and just rub this off just to make sure that uh, there's no old uh, thermal paste that can flake into our exposed pins. So my goal here is to do a nice clean upgrade and not to uh, damage anything along the way, right? So we're just gonna be nice and safe and uh, do this nice and easy. So, all right, now that we have this clean, we're gonna grab our new proc. And one of the things I actually wanna point out before we get going too, too far, you see this triangle right here, this gold triangle that's on the CPU. This is important because you'll notice there's the same triangle right here, a white triangle on the motherboard. You will notice there's a carved out triangle on your clip. And you will notice that there is a engraved triangle on your heat sink. That is gonna be your key indicator on how to line everything up. So it's gonna be uh, what we're gonna start with. We wanted to point that out so that you know when you come to install 
your CPU, you want to line the triangles up. So we'll just go ahead and slide this under and then we'll come around and you're just gonna pull this back and it is clipped in. So I'll flip it over just to make sure it's fully in there and everything's nice and good. So before we actually install this, we need to grab a thermal paste. So we're just gonna unscrew our thermal paste and you really don't have to put a ton of thermal paste on, just a nice little dab in the middle that's really all you need. And I'll kind of rub it over here because I just don't want to make the mess. And then now we're just going to line up our triangles again. So here's our triangle and here's our triangle. So we'll just slide everything in. And I will note with the thermal paste, uh, some people, uh, depending on how they do it, like to do, um, they'll do the little uh, plastic spreader and they will uh, wipe it around and that's fine to get a nice even spread. Uh, honestly, when you push it against the heat sink, it's so, so close. It's going to just spread it for you and you don't want to put too, too much so it doesn't come gushing over the sides because it could potentially get into your pins. So just a nice little bit in the middle is really all you need. So, all right, now we're going to go ahead and again, line up our triangles and we're going to set this down. and your blue clips will lock into place. And then we're gonna get our T30 bit. And just screw it down. So really it's a pretty simple install overall. Uh, videos like this will make it really easy and show you how to do it. Um, and if, hey, if you made it this far, do us a favor, click that like, smash that subscribe. And if you're looking for any servers, we custom build Dell, HPE, Super Micro, IBM, Cisco, we do new, we do use, and we would love the opportunity to earn your data center or your home labs business. Please email us at sales at cloudninja.com. That's sales at cloudninja.com.